I had had enough of bracing myself for the relentless parties that happened upstairs every weekend, hosted by my neighbor Damien, a hardcore, goth, enthusiast. The thumping bass and the never-ending stream of black-clad revelers had pushed me to my limits. I'd heard the upcoming Halloween weekend was going to be a 72-hour extravaganza of darkness, and it was all thanks to Damien and his roommate, Kevin, who seemed to be capitalizing on it. The leasing company had proven utterly useless in addressing the issue, so I decided to take matters into my own hands. I'd been tempted to utilize my knowledge from working at a DNA recombinant company before. I'd dabbled once before, using a rather potent RNA cocktail to cause some severe acne in an ex-girlfriend. It was a reckless experiment, and I couldn't help but wonder how persistent that acne had been. But this time, it was different. I had something special in mind for Damien and his friend. I started crafting a concoction that promised to reverse aging, induce cognitive impairment, and even bring about significant changes in their sexual expression. Damien was initially shocked and then outraged when he realized what I was doing, but the cognitive inhibitors did their job. In about 48 hours, what appeared to the world as a pair of teenage girls were now living upstairs. My involvement in this transformation was unsettling, but my desire for a quiet residence was unwavering. I was willing to assist my neighbors in their new identities, and they were surprisingly grateful. Before they headed out for one last year of trick-or-treating, they stopped by to show off their costumes. Dee, as she now called herself, believed she still exuded darkness, but her impact on me had been significantly reduced. Now, the only noises that bothered me were the occasional clicking of heels on hardwood floors above and the continuous loop of 21 Pilots songs playing in the background. Dee and her friend had fully embraced their new identities. They seemed to revel in the youthful energy and freedom their transformed bodies offered. In a strange way, I felt responsible for their metamorphosis, and although I had mixed feelings about it, I couldn't deny that it had brought a much-needed peace and quiet to my life. As Halloween approached, the two of them were excited about one final year of trick or treating as teenagers. They came down to show off their meticulously crafted costumes. Dee was dressed as a wickedly elegant vampire, while her friend exuded an aura of gothic mystery as a sorceress. It was clear that they had put a lot of effort into their outfits, and they looked fantastic. On Halloween night, I found myself peeking out of my window, watching them as they embarked on their adventure. I couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie with them, even though the circumstances of our connection were peculiar. The transformation had given them a new lease on life, and it had given me the tranquility I had longed for. Throughout the evening, I heard the occasional laughter and excited chatter from Dee and her friend as they went from house to house, collecting candy and enjoying the Halloween festivities. It was a stark contrast to the booming bass and gothic chaos that had once plagued my weekends. As time passed, I began to accept the strange turn of events in my life. Although I had initially taken drastic measures, it had led to a surprising and unexpected bond with my neighbors. Our unconventional connection, born out of necessity, had evolved into something resembling friendship. In the end, it turned out that Halloween had a way of bringing about transformations, not just in appearance but also in the relationships that formed between people. Dee and her friend had embraced their newfound identities, and I had found a sense of serenity in the midst of the darkness that had once surrounded me. It was a unique and unexpected outcome, one that left me pondering the mysterious ways in which life can unfold.